How to fix sitting posing mistakes. Well, shoot. All right, so that photo didn't quite turn out the way you wanted. Seemed really cool at the time, but the photo, not so great. I'm gonna show you what some of the most common mistakes are with sitting poses and how to fix them. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California, and posing is my jam. I absolutely love it. I get to teach about it. I have a freaking book all about it. I'll link this down below, tell you more about it later. Posing's what I do. It's my specialty, aside from lighting and making money. Anywho, let's talk about sitting poses. <laughs> Worst intro ever, I'm gonna keep it. So sitting poses can be tricky because things get scrunched, you have perspective changes. What do I do with my hands? There is a lot that can go into a sitting pose compared to something maybe laying down or standing. So how do you know what the mistakes are and then how do you fix them? Well, I'm gonna go through a handful of different photos with you that I took the other day uh, specifically for this video. And I gotta say, this was part of one of the most difficult shoots I've ever done because I took photos for this and I had to take photos that were purposefully wrong and that kind of hurts my soul. But I did it for you, so I hope you appreciate this. I've got another video also uh, about lighting and how to fix mistakes with that. Similar, I had to take photos with bad lighting, which breaks my heart, but I did it for you. So let's look at some photos of bad poses, specifically sitting. All right, let's take a look at the first photo. It's not a terrible pose, but there's something off. Can you guess what it is? It's the stool. The stool is way too tall for her. When you're going to position someone in a sitting pose, it's important to first figure out what they are going to sit on. Whether it's the floor or a bed or stairs or a chair or a table or a counter, whatever, think of the thing that they are sitting on. It needs to be the proper height for whatever it is you are trying to accomplish. If her feet are just gonna be dangling in the air, this stool could be totally fine. But I wanna pose her wearing these boots, the stool is not gonna be fine for that. It's too tall. Same thing goes if a chair or a bed or anything is too soft or too large. Someone will sink into it. One, it smushes things out and they lose shape, but also they'll look like a child in a grown up piece of furniture. So find something proportional and that can support somebody actually sitting on it. So let's take a look at the next photo. Way better. The only thing that changed is the height of the stool. I love these stools specifically and I got them at Target a couple of years ago because you can adjust the height like 10 inches. I've yet to have a client that I cannot pose on this particular stool. Whereas one of these ones, they look pretty cool, but you need to get some apple boxes, something for them to put their feet on so that they can get more bend in the knees like they have here. So again, if it's too low and the legs form a 90 degree angle, not great. If they're too tall, not awesome. You want somewhere in between. Let's check out the next one. All right, so they are sitting, but they still gotta do something with their hands. And the monster claw is like the number one thing we want to avoid in any photo. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. So what do we do with the hands? One of my favorites and like my go-to thing is just to pull the hand back. I have them turn their hand sideways and bring it back to their thigh. You can move closer to the knee, you can move closer to their hips, anywhere in there that looks comfortable for the shoulder and the elbow. Comfortable is not the right word because most of the poses aren't super comfortable, uh, but it looks comfortable. So something to keep in mind because no one ever actually sits like this. This is weird, but it looks really good. So turning the hand sideways is a great way to avoid the monster claw or you can put the hand back on the chair. I love doing this. And I'm gonna cover how this can get messed up in another one. You can also have them hook their thumb in a belt loop, bring their arm back on the chair. They could stack their hands on a leg. They could bring a hand up underneath the chin. Ton of things, just don't do the monster claw. Because when you ask people to sit down and put their hands in their legs, that's the first thing they always do, no matter what position they're in. 
All right, let's check out the next one. I love this sort of pose. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do. However, this pose needs to be modified based on somebody's body type. You can do two different things. By straightening the leg closest to the camera, like we see here, you can elongate somebody, but then you can also scrunch up their belly. Whereas if we swap legs, now you can still create curves, you can still elongate, but you can use this leg to hide the belly. She doesn't have a belly, but if your client does, this is the way to do it without making them look all scrunched. Not everyone is super flexible. Not everyone's going to be able to comfortably hold this pose. I think she does it really well. I also like to take this bent foot and cross it over the leg on the other side. Just one more way to modify it. This hand that goes over the top, notice it's nice and soft. We don't have the monster paw on top of the knee. She could take that hand, bring it back behind her. She could bring it up into her hair. She could do any number of things with it. Uh, just, it's a fantastic pose, super easy to do, and like anyone can do this. This is another one of those that I like to do on a hard surface, because if you put someone onto a bed, um, or a soft bench, or fluffy grass, or something, you can smush things out. Whereas having them sit this way, roll her weight onto her right hip, the farther hip from the camera, it will keep everything closest to the camera down here from getting smushed out in the floor. And the other thing to avoid, and this was back on the chair I hinted at before, and whether they're sitting down, this arm to brace them is really just for balance and decoration. They're not actually supporting their weight on it because it does two things. One, it can bring their shoulder up. And because of the proportions of the shoulder to the face, when the shoulder is close to the face, it makes the shoulder look giant compared to the face. Just like when you have a hand out here, it looks fine, but when you bring it up to the face, it makes my hand look huge. Same size, it's just weird proportion, weird scale. So we don't want the shoulder to come up because it makes the shoulder look big. It also hides the neck. And if someone doesn't have a lean neck like that, it can scrunch things up, create double chins, not flattering. Also, it can make the triceps bulge because that is the muscle that is being used to hold up the arm. So by bulging the muscles, flexing the arm, essentially you make the arm look bigger. So make the arm look bigger, the shoulder look bigger and make the neck disappear. I don't know of a single person who wants any of those things in their photos. So the hand is down there, but you have them lean forward a little bit and they're really engaging their core. This is all in the abs and rolling their weight onto that far hip from the camera so that you don't have the no neck bulging giant shoulder. All right, and we got one more. Can you guess what's wrong with this one? Well, because of this skirt, we can't see her legs or how she's sitting. She might not even be sitting. So something that's really important to remember when you are posing someone on a piece of furniture, consider their wardrobe. If they have a floofy tool skirt or anything else really that hinders the shape of the body or foreshortens them, like it does in this one, it makes it look like she's just standing and there's a weird poof in the skirt. You can't even tell she's sitting. You can barely even see there's a chair behind her if you weren't looking. Not ideal. I would do the same pose as something over here turned sideways so that we can actually see she has legs and that she's sitting. Um, not, not great right here. Again, just turning it so you can see and then bring the feet out so it looks like she has legs and you can totally fix an image like this. So we don't want the clothes to distract when they're sitting down. We don't want them to foreshorten and make her legs disappear. We don't want bulging muscles or necks to disappear. And it seems like there's a lot. That's why I created the posing book because I walk you through all the specifics of how to do the poses the right way. And you get an example in here of what each of them looks like. And I do poses that are sitting. I do them when they're lying down, standing, on the bed, on a chair. I have everything sorted out for you. So you're like, cool, I want chair poses. What chair poses? You flip over to the chair section 
and you can just look up chair poses and see exactly how to do them. Plus, again, like I said, this is basically a posing course in a book. The whole beginning of the book is talking about posing theory. What makes a good pose? Giving helpful direction, creating lines. Like, how do I know if the pose is even right? What am I looking out for? So ton of amazing info in that book. You can pick it up at boudoirguild.com. I also have posing videos on there where you can watch me go through with a model and tell her exactly how to do all the poses, what I'm looking for, how do I know if it's wrong, how to fix it. Everything is at the boudoirguild.com in the posing video section or the posing book. So go pick those up and start posing like a freaking master. You are amazing. See you inside.